Hey there, what's your wake-up juice or your comfort juice? I think we all know by now, my nasa lacquer coffee or coffee keys. But I think everybody has their own, right? I hope you guys are doing well today. But I want to talk to a specific someone today. I want to talk to you who don't know where to go anymore. Who who tries your hardest and everything just seems to fail. Plans just seem to do not work out. You don't seem to get the desired results. You don't seem to move forward. You don't seem to get anywhere. You've been on your knees. You, you sat last night crying. Because you don't see improvement and increase in your life. Because that's how I've been feeling for a, a while as well, actually. And every time God reminds me that He's still in control. And we've got to remember that He's always in control. And we've got to remember that God is always watching over you. He's always protecting you, wherever you are, wherever you go. You know, sometimes God cancels your plans to save your life. And as I was thinking about that this morning, I was reminded of something that I shared previously about being a kid in high school playing first team cricket, having a point to prove to people in a different school. Yet the last practice before the weekend's game where I would have had my chance, cracked my ankle and I couldn't play. And I was so upset. Man, I was upset. I was even upset with the Lord. I was like, why Lord? And that weekend, which was, well, it wasn't the last practice, second last practice, it was the Tuesday. And that weekend I was meant to go help my dad with something. And there he was on his way to go do this thing. He got into an accident because a car swerved out in front of him. And he rolled the buck here. Where I would have sat, I would have probably been dead. I would have had a phenomenal game on the Saturday. And by the Sunday, I wouldn't have opened my eyes again. My parents would have had to deal with not having their son anymore. I would have been a statistic of a kid dying at 18. So God cancelled my plans to save my life. And that wasn't the first time and it most certainly wasn't the last time in my life up to this point where I am now. I'll tell you that. So I want to share with you and I want to encourage you that you shouldn't be discouraged. Cry with the Lord. Go sit at His feet if you want to cry. We need to get those feelings out as well because we do feel them. I was sitting here last night actually. I had a worship session on another level again. Crying out to God because... My heart does get sore. We all do. But it's not punishment when God doesn't make things happen the way we want to. As I said, it's protection. He always watches over you. And I just had this need or this, this list to just share some scripture with you this morning. Verses that you can hold on to to know that God is always for you. My favorite one I've been carrying with me all my life is Psalm 91 verse 11. Where it says he will command his angels concerning you to protect you wherever you go. So you're always under this protection, you know. David writes in Psalms 121, he says he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He's always awake. He's always watching. You know, Deuteronomy 38, also one of my more favorite ones. Verse 8 says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Don't be afraid. What I just said, don't be discouraged. God has got you, my friend. Exodus 14 is the important part as well. You know, there's, there's always and often there's been a, a post that I come across where it says that God removed certain people from your life because he heard the conversations that you didn't. You know, there's always people talking about a version of you that you no longer are because they don't have access to the who you are now. I don't know if you've ever thought of this. I, the most difficult people in your life to show the change to or where the changes will get real is the people closest to you. Friends, family, work colleagues. I tell you, I feel like I'm under fire almost every day because people are watching my every move. doesn't matter how long I've been walking this road. I mean, you and I have been sitting here for six months chatting every morning. Or I'm talking. You're probably talking to me. I hope you're talking to me at that side. 
I've also realized that sometimes we end up putting God in a box. We tend to step into God's way because we want to take control of the things that we shouldn't be trying to control because we literally can't. And that's coming back to the man part and the God part in every single thing that God tells us to do. My friend, if God has something for you, it will be yours. If he canceled your plan to protect you now, it means he's got something much better for you. Something that's going to be perfect. That deal that you wanted, that event that you wanted to book, that place where you wanted to go speak, that spot where you needed to go sing. If God canceled it, it means he canceled it for a very good reason. There could have been a dishonest businessman sitting behind everything. Somebody would have cheated you out of all your money. There could have been an event that left you in the middle of nowhere stranded without nothing. There could have been an event that would have cost you your life. He literally was protecting you from something that you didn't see. Because our battle is not against the flesh and blood, my friend. It's against the wicked powers of the enemy. And he's not all powerful. Our God is all powerful. As I said in Exodus 14, verse 14, it says, The Lord will fight for you. You need to only be still, as Moses said to the Israelites. Taking them out of Egypt, you know. <laughs> Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. God is always around. He's always there to help you. He's always there to, ah, he's your refuge, man. He's your strength. The whole Psalm 91 actually is, is a great one to go and read because that whole chapter feel for me like it's about God's protection because he explains how these angels will carry you on their hands, that you will walk over snakes and lions, that you will trample them, you won't even bump your toe against a rock. You know, in, I think it was Psalms 23 now, I'm still learning to be better at pinpointing scripture. But where David says, surely his goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And he will. Because there's favor upon your life, my friend. God favors you. You're God's favorite child. He's put absolutely too much effort into creating you. Why would he know how many hairs are on your head if he didn't need you to be protected? If you aren't precious, cargo to him. If you aren't precious to him. If what you need to do, what he's called you to do, isn't precious to him. I was just reading this morning again about David that declared after God had told him he's not going to build the temple, yet his son Solomon has been instructed to do so. And I've been reading about where he stands there and he declares to the whole, he's, he's all, all his people there. He said, I can't because God said my hands, because being a man of war, my hands are too full of blood. So I can't build an ark, a, a temple for his ark or for him as well. But my son have been instructed to do so as long as he remains in God's word, in God's rules, in God's commandments. As long as he follows, God will establish Solomon's kingdom. As long as we walk in what God has told us to do, my friend, his goodness and mercy will follow you anyway. But his blessings, his richest blessings lie in that exactly what he told you to do. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. <laughs> verse 3 the eyes of the Lord are everywhere he keeps watch on the wicked and on the good so God sees everything my friend that's what I'm saying that's why he removes some people from your life that's why he stops certain plans from going through that's why he guides you because not everything is going to be great but it feels less great because we're not seeing what God needs us to see always our eyes aren't what God needs our eyes to be on you know in a Somebody explained to me again, oh, I think I saw a video again recently about how God used to whisper to Ezekiel. Now in a world that's so full of chaos and noise, we really need to learn sometimes to be quiet because what if God is whispering to you? I've heard often and I've also found myself in a place where I feel, yes, God's just not speaking to me right now. But then again, is it quiet enough around me so I can hear him if he's whispering? God doesn't force himself upon you. He's very gentle. He wants you to choose him. And in that choice, he will definitely speak to you, my friend. But I hope you can take courage out of this today. And you can take some, oh man. Because God loves you, my friend. That's all I want to tell you. That he loves you and he makes things happen all. You know, Romans 8, uh, 8.28 says, he works, Let's all plans work for the good of those who love him. For those who are called according to his purpose. It's for your good. God protects you. Shalom.